Thank you everyone for coming tonight. I'm very happy to be here with you. Thank you everyone here. Thank you on behalf of the Ministry of Finance and the entire government for your mainful investment in Israel. Allow me to begin by telling you who I am and where I came from. I am Betzalel, the grandson of my late grandfather, Yaakov, who managed to escape to Israel before the Holocaust. His parents drowned on an immigration ship, Mafkura, on their way to Israel. They never made it. My land grandmother, Bruria, survived the horrible events of the Holocaust, living in the ghetto and the death marches. Her entire family perished, perished, perished during the war. She alone made it to Israel. My land grandmother, Sarah, was born over a century ago in Metula, a settlement in the north of Israel to a family of pioneers. My land grandfather, Shimon, was a certain generation of my family to call Jerusalem their home. So I am another link in this chain of generation. Def defendi, defined by exile and re redemption of survival and pioneering, creating deep roots and finding fulfillment. And my family is one of many. For 2,000 years, our people were not allowed to have our Jewish state or to invest in a country of our own. And yet, Jews around the world held on to the hope that our dream will one day become real. This moment in the history of Israel is a miracle. And for more than 70 years, Israel bonds, investors like you, have helped make our Jewish state a reality. But there is still work to be done, so don't stop investing. With Israel bonds, you give us funds to build by providing a strong return, never missing payment, and creating powerful country. We show you how good of an investment you made. And your investment does more than help us build. When you buy an Israel bond, you are also saying to those that follow the BDS that they need to go find something else to fill their time with. Since Israel bonds began, it has raised about $50 billion for the state of Israel. And I think that you have to have And we are using these funds to make Israel better each day. In the past few months, as a minister of, of a finance minister, I have been doing my part to improve Israel. I am to battle the cost of living, increase competition, and accelerate much needed investment in infrastructure throughout Israel. I am taking every step to ensure we remain fiscally sound and economically secure. My focus over the past few months has been on crafting and passing a budget that is focused on strong growth and building up infrastructure to improve productivity. We are building this country for all 
its people. Jews and Arab alike benefit from the goodness that exists in the state of Israel. And in this point, I want to say a few words about the elephant is in the room. As I have already said and written, and repeat now with sincere regret, my comment after Hawara create a completely mistake impression. I stand before you now, as always, committed to the security of the state of Israel, to our shared values, and the right as the highest moral commitment of our armed force to protect every innocent life, Jew or Arab. It was only a few decades ago that Israel was filled with swamps and malaria was spreading. Today, our country is at the forefront of the world stage in technological, economic, and social de de development. And if that isn't enough, all of this was built under context attack from neighboring con countries and terrorism. But thanks for faith and action, and thanks to you. The Jewish state is getting better every day, and your investment support us. My key message for you today is a simple one. Thank you, thank you, and thank you again. Thank you for being our partner and believing in us. I also thank all of you for the unquenchable connection between Israel and the diaspora Judaism. Judaism has always no controversies. We can even say it was built on controversies. This agreement is not something that should care us. There are among us religious and secular people, reform, conservative, unaffiliated, and others. In Israel, we have big differences, but for one moment, we must not forget that we are brothers. Despite all the differences, despite the many colors that make up the Jewish mosaic, we are one. <laughs> we have common goals of Tikkun Olam, and each of us seeks to fulfill that goal from a different angle. Together, I have no doubt that we will succeed. Last week, and in the last few months in general, we have, we have, we have heard a lot of harsh words, talks of boycotts and violence. Let me say clearly, this has no place between our countries and between our people. The alliance between Israel and the U.S. is one of values, equality, democracy, and inclusion. This alliance is not just with Republicans or democ Democrats. It is not with only the right or the left wing. It is an alliance of value that fight evil by adding light. Suddenly, a time we all pay a heavy price for this alliance. My advisor, Eitan, he is standing right now near me. Four years ago, he lost his brother, Ari Fould, 
While Ari was simply doing his holiday shopping two days before Yom Kippur. Ari was born and raised in New York. In the eighth grade, he even traveled to Washington DC for his annual school trip. His childhood was in New York, but once he arrived in Israel, he fell in love. Ari joined the IDF and stayed in Israel. He married Miriam and they had four lovely children. Ari dedicated his life to telling the true story of the state of Israel and to spreading light to all those around him. But then that fateful day came and Ari was murdered by an evil terrorist. But I'm here to tell you, have no doubt that his light and yours and ours is one that no one will be able to extinguish. This light will never go out. This is the light that sanctifies life. The light that seeks to blossom the wilderness the light that seeks to build, not to destroy. The same light that built, that, that built the American nation and built the state of Israel. Ari's light is your light. And in this light, we are partners. <laughs> Truth, there are difficult along the way and they are painful. But even with this, I sometimes pinch myself to make sure I am not in a dream. Then I remember my grandmother, and I know I am indeed in a dream, a dream that's coming true. 75 years after my grandmother drowned on the Mafkura, her grandson arrived in Washington as a minister in the Israeli government. He has come to address Israel bonds, to speak to Americans who invest their time, money, and energy in the state of Israel. Is this not a miracle of the scale of the exodus of Egypt? What would my grandmother say? What would their family who never made it to Israel think? How could they even imagine me here? What would they think of sovereign Jewish country that leads the fields of high tech and agriculture? A state that cares about environmental protection, green energy, a powerful Jewish state that has made military to protect it and all of its inhibited. Tell me, is this not miracle? A miracle of the race of Israel in its own land, a miracle of the vision of the prophets that create ever stronger light, a miracle that generations had, have dreamed of. A miracle that today we see before our eyes as we continue the construction of each new floor in the building of our nation. A miracle that you and I are privileged to be part of. And for this miracle, we should bless each new day that we live this incredible dream. Shechayanu vekiimanu veigianu lazman haze. Thank you very much for the partnership. Thank you. Thank you very much.